Welcome back. Today we are building this. This is a Bluetooth system monitor for your PC or Mac. Now you can see this running completely wireless and that is because I'm using the ESP32 Touchdown which you can buy in the link below. But if you do not have one of these you can also build it using your free touch deck which is a ESP32 with an ILI 9488 touchscreen. In this video I'm going to show you how to build it from scratch and in the end you will have one of these. Enough talk, let's start. My chair is stuck. In this video I will mostly be using the ESP32 touchdown which you can buy using the links below. And this has the advantage of being completely wireless because it can run off a LiPo battery. But I made this project so that you can use an ESP32 with an ILI 9488 touchscreen, although I would recommend getting the handy ESP32 and TFT combiner board I made, because loose breadboard wires can cause malfunctions pretty quick. If you're using an ESP32 touchdown, all you need other than that is a USB-C data cable. If not, you are going to need an ESP32, an ILI 9488 with touchscreen, some jumper wires, and a USB micro data cable. You could, as I said, also use the PCB I made to connect the ESP32 and the screen together. But in that case, it is important that you get the ESP32 with 38 pins. This is the one where the 3.3 volt and ground pin are across from each other. Now either solder the ESP32 and the screen to the combiner board using some headers or connect the screen and the ESP using jumper wires according to the wiring diagram which you can also find in the GitHub repo and on Instructables. If you haven't already, download and install the latest version of the Arduino IDE. Next, to install the ESP32 Arduino core, go to Preferences and click on the little icon at the end of additional board manager URLs. This opens a new window. In there, start a new line and paste the URL to the ESP32 Arduino core. Hit OK and hit OK again. Now go to Tools, Board and Boards Manager. When this is done loading, type in ESP32 and click Install. When it's done installing, click Done. The next thing we need to do is install the libraries needed for this project. The screen is controlled by using the popular TFT ESPI library. To install this, go to Sketch, Include Library and Library Manager. Wait for it to load and type in TFT underscore ESPI. Scroll down until you see TFT ESPI by Bodmer and click Install. When it's installed, click Done. Now, if you're using the ESP32 Touchdown, you will also need the library for its touch controller. You can install this by downloading the zip file from the GitHub repo. And then going to Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip Library. Find the place where you downloaded it and click Choose. With the TFT ESPI library comes a setup. This setup needs to be changed according to the screen you are using. You will likely find this file in Documents, Arduino, Libraries, TFT ESPI. The file we need to edit is called user underscore setup dot h. After you open this file in your favorite editor, you could go through the whole file and edit all the variables needed. But you can also take a shortcut. In the repo on GitHub I have provided some example user setups which you can copy and paste using Ctrl plus A and Ctrl C. Overwrite everything that is in the current user setup.h, this time using Ctrl A and Ctrl V. Save the file and you're done. The nice icons you saw earlier are one image that is displayed in the background. We need to upload this to the ESP32. I do this using a tool called ESP32 Sketch Data Upload. You can download this tool from GitHub. Go to the releases page and download the file that is called ESP32FS-1.0.zip. In your Arduino sketchbook directory, 
create a directory called tools if it doesn't exist yet. Unpack the tool into the tools directory. The path will look like Arduino, tools, ESP32FS, tool, ESP32FS.jar. Now restart the Arduino IDE. Open the Bluetooth system monitor sketch and go to tools. And make sure you have the right partitioning scheme selected. The default profile is fine here. Now still on the tools, click ESP32 sketch data upload. This will upload the background image to your ESP32. Now with the Bluetooth system monitor sketch still open, you need to select the right touch mode according to your setup. Uncomment one of the lines under select touch mode. There are a few other settings you can edit. You can set the scale of the Y axis per graph. This is to ensure that the data collected from your computer will fit on the graph. You might have to play around with this. The other settings you can alter are warning levels. If values like temperature and fan speed get above this threshold, the values will turn red on the display. In the case of disk space and free memory, the values will turn red if they get below this value. When you're happy with all your settings, upload the sketch. On Windows, left click on the Start menu and go to Settings. In there, click on Devices. Click on Add Bluetooth or Other Device and select Bluetooth. Wait for it to find ESP32 or My Display. Now click on it. It should now be connected. After this, you can click Done. If you now open the Device Manager and click on the arrow next to Ports, there should be a new device called Standard Serial over Bluetooth Link. On my device, two ports showed up. I picked the first one, COM16. Now in the folder called host underscore python, you will find a script called windows underscore host dot pi. Open this in your code editor and look for the line that says change this to match your COM port. This is where you will have to enter the COM port that the Bluetooth serial connection is on. If you scroll up from there, you can find a line where you can change the hard drive it will report free space from. If you change that, make sure to use two backslashes. Before you can run the script, you will have to install some Python modules. Open a terminal or command prompt and navigate to the directory that the Python script is in. In here, we can use pip to install the modules. Type pip install pyserial and hit enter. This will install the serial module. Now repeat this for the modules called psutil and for pythonnet. After the modules installed correctly, you can run the script. Important is that the script needs administrator rights to get some of the system information. Open a command prompt by clicking on the start menu and type command prompt. Before you are done typing, the command prompt item should show up. Now right click on that and select run as administrator. When prompted, click allow. Now again, navigate to the folder where the Python script is and type python3 windows underscore host dot pi and hit enter. The system data is now being sent to your monitor. You can of course confirm this on your screen. On macOS the process is different and I think slightly easier. Open the Bluetooth preferences and wait for it to find ESP32 or My Display. Now hit connect. You can find the name of the serial device by using ls slash dev slash tti.star. On Mac, serial ports usually have the same name across all Macs. So this means you do not have to change the name in the Python script, but you can if needed. Next, you will have to install two modules. Open a terminal and type pip install pi serial. And do the same for psutil. Next, to run the script, you need administrator rights. So use sudo python3 macOS underscore host dot pi to start the script. The system data is now being sent to your screen, and you can of course confirm this by looking at your brand new system monitor. On your system monitor, data should now be coming in. You can see CPU temperature, fan speed, free RAM, 
free drive space, GPU temperature, and the number of processes running on your computer. If you tap one of the items, a graph shows up, displaying the last 21 readings. You can also print a case for it if you like. The case is used for the ESP32 with combined TFT, is the same case as you use for free touch deck, so you can just use that. Also, there are a lot of remixes on Thingiverse of the original case, so you might want to check those out. The case for the ESP32 Touchdown can be found in the ESP32 Touchdown repo, and of course, all links are in the description below. If you have any questions, join my Discord in the link below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.